Hi, Roy Kirkas here. Today I'm going to color my first Saguaro image, which I took a couple years ago. So this is a black and white photo that's printed with a light jet on matte photo paper. And I'm going to color this image with my Marshall photo oils. Okay, let's do this. visit to Sarawa National Park in Arizona was at the last day of an Arizona road trip in which I drove in a week from Monument Valley in the north to Tucson in the south. So again like normal I start with the sky. With the largest regions and do the detail the details at the end. I'm using a cotton round with sky blue on it. First I'm just adding the color by just rubbing this this paint onto the onto the sky. Worry about this yet? Where I go over the lines. This will get a different color later. It's time to smooth that out a little with a clean cotton round. Making it more uniform. I'm just very gently going over it, not pushing in too hard. give you these really nice smooth looking blue skies. See, there's not much on it. Okay, that looks good. And then I'll work my way down. Now I'm going to do the mountains in the background. I'm gonna, and I'm going to try, it's like flash color, but it's like a, like a subtle reddish brown.
This will go on most of the mountains, but I also add some purples. And I'm staying away from the edges, because I'm going to add the color there with Q-tips. Contrast works nice between cool and warm. Looks like this pigment is not as strong as the blue. I need a lot more of this to get the color added. Okay, now let's work on that edge. Using a Q-tip, put some of the color on. I'm carefully adding that to the mountain so it uh, bunches up against the sky. So now I don't want to go over the lines. Just going over the blue that was there earlier, the blue that's on the mountain, I will just rub off when I add the new color on it. over here so I'm rubbing a little bit of the paint off with the clean side of this q-tip so I'm using cobalt violet now and I mixed a little with the flesh color See how that looks. Actually what I'll do is, I'll put more of that color in the back. Nice to have a little bit of variation of the light brown and the purple. And then I'll, I'll mix a little bit of 
That purple was the blue I used earlier. You get a more of a bluish purple. It's more like, let's see. I can, it's called Air Force Blue. Putting that on the, the the brush that's on the mountains. Looks a little rough now, but I'll smooth it out. That I'm going to smooth out with a clean cotton round. Just dab on it. Just gets rid of the rough edges. Of course, I have to be careful not to go onto the sky now. too soft so I want a little more of that color here. Now I want to accentuate some of the some of the bands that go here with some carmine, which is like a bright red. Just this one. Let's see what happens if that if I put that on immediately directly.
don't want to put it on too thick that it will look too weird. use some burnt sienna for the, the dirt, the ground, to see what it looks like. It's this guy. yet about the Savaros here. I'll fix those later. All the dirt areas I can I recognize. And I'll tone it down a little bit more. So I'm using clean side of a cotton round. have to go over that with a little bit of green, we'll see. easily avoid the Savaros, I'll do that. Okay, let's tone that down again with a clean cotton round. And I'm going to add some of that flash color we used earlier for the mountains. Make it look a little warmer. And 
now I'm going to add some oxide green to the brush. The brush and the image, of course. Back here I'll also add some more green with a Q-tip to these brushes. Add some green to these uh, rollers in the back here too. Let's see, I want to add some yellow to this brush on the front here. I'm gonna mix some of that carmine in. A nice colorful palette in the desert. Save the best for last, so I'm going to do the largest silver rose now. Let's start by adding this simple oxide green and see if we can make him stand out.
trying to add a little bit of shading by putting a little more color on one side of the cactus. Definitely standing out. yellow at the bottom of these or some some locations of the of the cactus that green a little more brighter you add a little yellow to it also and I might do a tutorial on that in the future when I turned this, this it wasn't initially a color image which I turned black and white and what I do then when I know that I'm gonna color a, a lot of saturated color to parts of an image like in this case the cacti, I make sure that those are going to be close to white even, very bright, so you can add a lot of saturated color to them. If you don't pay attention to that, they turn out like medium gray, and then you, you just with these oils you cannot get them very bright anymore, very saturated. So when you turn an image black and white you need to Think of where the colors will go, and most of the color will go. Yeah. 
it's done. 